Hey there, friends. Welcome back. I'm gonna take this real quick. Yellow. Uh-huh. Are you sure? I thought she retired. No, the red, not the blue. Oh. Well, put me down for six, then. Mm-hmm. Nothing a horse can't do. All right. Wrong number. I don't want to get myself too excited, but word on the street is this quarantine's not going to be lasting much longer. <laughs> hey, Dracovus, pal. What are you doing there, buddy? You coloring? Drac? Huh? No, just doing a thing is all. Cool. What kind of thing? Just a thing! God! I'm laying here trying to color. I didn't expect an interrogation. I thought I'd finish this piece. Then maybe you'd be so kind as to put it up on the wall there for me. Okay, one, look how many fucking drawings I've already put on the wall, right? There's no more room. And two, why don't you just quit being a baby and tell me what's bothering you? I said... I don't want to talk about it. Whatever. Fine. Fine! What the hell was that all about? I mean, you'd think you'd be happy that this stuff's almost over, right? Anyway, I'm sorry you guys had to see that. The truth is, sometimes friends fight. Sometimes brothers and sisters fight. You know, doesn't mean they don't love each other, it's just the way things go sometimes. And Anne, though, I mean, there's still nothing more important than family. As a matter of fact, that's the lesson. That's the lesson. Captain Heath Lonigan had just learned the hard way. Captain Lonigan had just set out to rescue his wife, Alondra, from a gang of space pirates. These were no ordinary pirates, however. They were changelings, a bear-like people known for two things. One, they could alter their appearance any way they liked. And two, they were really fucking annoying. Hey, Lonigan! You're never gonna see your wife again. So why not you just come up here and touch my butt? <laughs> God damn it. Where is she? <laughs> I knew you'd come. You'll have to do better than that. Alondra would never wear that shade of blue. How do I know it's you? Prove it's you. What do you want me to say? A secret. Something only we would know. Something we've never told us. She told her mother everything. Where the fuck's my wife? It's you. I don't know. What can I do? Eye colors are right. Gown's certainly up your alley. I didn't pick this one out. They did. Alondra, it is you. Are you alright? Did they hurt you? I'm fine, really. I just... Just shut up and kiss me. likes to get their butt touched. Oh, 
<laughs> Fuck. Hey guys, we just get a little. Fuck. Ahem. What are you doing? I was wrong to yell at you, dear friend. I've done some thinking. If you don't mind, I'd like to play you a little something. All right. For everything in this world, there exists a demon. Everything? Even shampoo? Everything. Once an object comes into existence, or once an idea is born, so too is its protector. I first came to be over 20 million years ago. A new species of bird had evolved on the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. Being a demon isn't like being a human, you see. We know our purpose from the moment we're born. Mine was to guide and protect this strange new creature. Though I truly loved my birds, I began to resent the level of responsibility they demanded. In the year 1500, I decided to walk away from what I promised myself would be no longer than one week. It was my first time ever leaving the island. I saw the cities that man had built from stone and wood. I fell in love with his music, his wine, and his women folk. I lost myself in a sex and alcohol fueled binge for about, oh, I don't know, 150 years. Upon my return, I was quite hungover. In my absence, humans had discovered my bird and named it the Dodo. Worse, they had driven my beloved Dodo to extinction. I lost myself in guilt. I had failed the only task I'd ever known. Over the coming years, I began to grow sickly and old. I observed man and his world, always hoping that each day would be my last. Then one day, I saw the most peculiar man in the final chapter of my life. He and I became friends. The man who'd forgotten his purpose and the demon whose purpose had long since passed. While I cherish these final days together, I fear that after I am gone, this friend who I love will waste his life as I have, ignoring his calling until it one day calls no more. So, like, is there a sandpaper demon? I believe her name was Cindy. Nice girl. Quiet, but nice. Huh. All I can really do is sing. 